scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. So when you prosper, when you grow in grace, when you increase, when you express dominion over principalities and powers, over systems and structures, when you advance, it is not just to your own good. It is for the good of the name of the Lord also. John chapter 17 and verse 1, Jesus is praying now. And here's what he said. Father, he says, the hour is come. Glorify thy son. Why? That thy son may glorify thee. So we now know the way God is glorified. He is glorified when the saints are glorified. Is that true? I told us in the morning that the principle of shared dominion is such that no man can glorify himself. You will have to invest your glory in another entity outside of you. It's the excellence of that object outside of you that brings your glory. Is that true? So the glory of the Father is only seen when the Son is glorified. The glory of the Son is only seen when the church in partnership with the Holy Spirit is glorified. And the glory of the church is only seen in their dominion over this system and this structure. Praise the name of the Lord. That means anything that comes to your life attempting to stop you from rising to the fullness of your spiritual potential is not just fighting you it's fighting the revelation of the glory of god for instance sickness for instance poverty for instance failure you see why we attack these things we don't attack them just because we have any personal we attack them because they are interruptions to the manifestation of the glory of god So everywhere we see sickness, everywhere we see failure, everywhere we see defeat, everywhere we see spiritual lukewarmness, everywhere we see a mediocre life and destiny, we have a mandate under God as, as a result of our jealousy for him. We, we, we fight anything that attempts to misrepresent him. You see, let me tell you this. Every time Satan afflicts men, pay attention, mankind, is the highest the zenith of god's creation when satan afflicts men when satan buffets people when we live a life of failure spiritual laxity moral decadence satan is using man as a com a canvas a painter's canvas to write a letter to god that your dominion is still questionable in the earth when god heals and delivers is god using man to write a reply back to creation i am still on the throne so when you celebrate a miracle when you celebrate a manifestation of god's power it's more than the validation of the authenticity of a man of god you are in partnership with heaven writing a letter to say you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne you are god alone you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne that is the reason why when people see these manifestations of god's power it gives them a consciousness that there is still a god in heaven 
who watches over the affairs of men. You know, Satan has an attitude of bullying people out of the consciousness of godliness. He makes you believe he's their God and you hear people asking questions. Is there God in heaven? If he's in heaven, why, why are we like this? So God raises men and women to reveal his glory. The concept of God's glory is not complicated. We have a mandate under God that consistently our lives become and remain an effulgence of his excellence. I say it this way. If someone forgot to do his devotion in the morning, when he sees you, he should not feel bad because you are a continuation of his devotion. He can read scriptures through your life. While he's feeling bad that I forgot my Bible at home, the moment he looks at your life, he can see scriptures, a display of the possibilities of God. Men should never look at your life and forget that there is a God. The excellence in your life should force them back to know that there is God. They look at the dexterity, the prosperity, the blessing that you are so blessed and yet your heart is not tied to these things. You love God with all your heart. Realms of favor that are inexplainable. Listen, if you do not believe this, you will live a defeated life, number one. And number two, God will not be glorified in your life. John chapter 15 and verse 8. Herein is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. That means this is how God is glorified. When you bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. In your bearing fruit you justify that the Holy Spirit mentored you. You justify that you were built by God. You can know a block that was built by Julius Berger with one simple test. Throw it up. It will fall to the ground and not break. You know that this is superior engineering. So when God fashions you, you see why God takes his time to make men? Because he's about to place his name on them. And he does not want to place his name on a product that fails so woefully. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. So in my life, be glorified. Be glorified. In this state, be glorified, be glorified. There is a level of the manifestation of the possibilities of the kingdom that Jalingo can bring forth. That it will now begin to be a reference point. Have you noticed what is happening in Jalingo? Suddenly, there is a level of, of moral progress young people are beginning to be responsible it becomes is too significant to be ignored no what is suddenly happening there is such an avalanche of godliness moral excellence young people are now coming bringing their lives into order every church you go to there is fire on that altar people getting jobs people living responsibly the businesses of people excelling and yet their hearts are not connected to those things loving jesus now you call that a revelation of god's glory because it will compel anybody who takes jesus as a joke to think these are the evidences the end of every argument is the presence of results creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of god we have given too many excuses. It's time for creation to see the manifestation of the glory and the power of God. Are we together? Then in the morning I began to give, my intention is to give three keys. But I must say this. We spoke about the concept of divine patterns. Please pay attention. This is a very important punchline in this whole discourse of the glory of God. That a pattern 
is an ordinance a pattern is a modus operandi a pattern is a a defined and authorized pathway to achieving a result are we together now please say patterns one more time shout patterns say divine patterns according to scripture doing a quick recap according to scripture god does not create anything twice he creates it once and then he ties in that creation the spiritual pattern for the continuity of that process so for instance god formed the first man is that true brought a woman out of that man and he's never had to create any human species again why because he programmed a pattern called procreation so if you want more men it's not an issue of prayer and crying you subscribe to the pattern that dimension of his glory depends on your operating that pattern now listen please the patterns of god divine patterns forerun the glory of god divine patterns forerun the glory of god that means every time you want to see the glory of god and you now know what i mean by the glory of god the the, the summation of every possibility that can be in god there is a spiritual pattern to see the glory of god manifest as healing and health there is a spiritual pattern that brings prosperity and the blessing of the lord to the saints there is a spiritual pattern that makes for speed and restoration there is a spiritual pattern that supplies for dominion over principalities and powers is that true there is a spiritual pattern that is responsible for the arrival and the multiplication of the anointing your assignment is to pay attention to the ministry of teaching priests in partnership with the holy ghost because jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 it says and i will give you shepherds or pastors after my heart they are like spiritual chefs and their assignment is to feed you with knowledge and with understanding so sunday after sunday every time we gather sunday and every other weekday we are learning among other things the spiritual patterns jesus the way jesus the way god's authorized system of operation listen the difference between any two believers is not the love of god the same lord is rich unto all the difference between the quality of the christian experience of any two believers is not the love of god invested towards them it is the same love towards them the difference between any two believers is the degree to which they have been able to access thorough spiritual understanding on the ways of god we examine the life of moses and we saw that before moses asked the lord for glory he first asked show me your ways it is the knowledge of the patterns of god there is a spiritual pattern for effective ministry if you do not find that effective ministry no matter how well meaning and well intentioned you are you will struggle in ministry and your life and your ministry will be no representation at all of god's potential politicians we have a number of them here gratefully tonight there is a spiritual pattern that is responsible for effective governance for instance according to the templates given to us from scripture any territory is only transformed when there is a tripartite formation of king priest prophet it is never king alone the king represents those who legislate but behind the scene there must be the priestly and the prophetic ministry backing the kings otherwise the forces of the territory will destroy them so if the only thing you have is just election you will not do well because it is more than policies in the house of assembly there are spirits in the days of daniel there's the spirits of the medis and the Persians that fight the purposes of god so it is king priest prophet that tripartite formation is what brings dominion sociologically speaking longevity has a spiritual pattern that controls it people don't just live long by mistake no as 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 helpless and, and i don't mean to insult your pedigree but as helpless as people look in the face of death 
a man can have dominion over untimely death. It is true. Death itself is a spirit that depends on other spirits to operate. Is the rider on the fourth horse. There were four horses in the book of Revelation. And he saw one that rode upon a dark horse, a pale horse. His name is death. Death depends on other spirits to come. It depends on fear. It depends on sicknesses. It depends on tragedy. It cannot just come to you like that. There are spirits that must forerun death. Are we together? The person who opens the door for a thief to come and the thief, who is greater in terms of destruction? We don't fear fear, yet we fear other things that depend on fear to happen. And to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. Are we together? So we're talking divine patterns. Everybody you see who has risen to an enviable position in the kingdom, bringing glory to the name of the Lord in ministry, in business, in politics and governance, in family life, in career, whether consciously or unconsciously, they have stumbled into divine patterns and have operated it either, either haphazardly or intentionally. The consistency of their results show that they are walking by light. But it is possible to have haphazardly stumble into these things and you find out that for one week, favor just happens to you and after then it doesn't happen again. There are principles. When I learned this, I rejoiced. Because I found out that there are keys. It is on the strength of these divine patterns that a man can walk in dominion, in experience, manifesting the glory of God. You may have heard me say that dominion is not an impartation. There is no anointing for dominion. Dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending divine patterns. You are said to be matured and you are said to be strong in this kingdom and in to the degree to which you have through the sacrifice of alignment and cooperation with the word and the spirit you have pieced together the various patterns that are connected to the outcomes spiritual outcomes so with uncanny mastery like a doctor if someone comes to meet you and says for instance i am a family man and things are going very bad it looks like my life is going haywire while he's talking from his speech as a matured believer you can see the gaps you can see the areas where he's not working in keeping the glory of god is absent in his life because there are patterns that have not been adhered to now you can advise him i know what you are doing when a patient is talking to a doctor and he's saying doctor uh, I have headache last week I I even passed out the doctor is not interested there are things the doctor is looking for and when you meet a consultant sometimes while you are talking he can even be eating or writing something and you meet a doctor please please give me your attention I say look I've worked in this thing for 30 years I have mastered the things that cause various sicknesses so whilst you are talking it's not your stories I'm listening for in two three minutes i can pick with uncanny mastery the things you are doing wrong and i can tell you go and buy this drug buy this drug buy this drug and i don't need to see you again i know it will work the bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully is god helping us one of the things i'm trusting that will happen to us in this conference is that we move past the realm of guessing you see most believers we do not have certainty of divine patterns so when we are confronted with situations that require the manifestation of the glory of god what happens is that we try anything we know at random spiritually speaking 
the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus. We try communion, we try prayer, we try the fire of the Holy Ghost, we touch and agree, we try giving. We just know that somehow one of them will work. And you are right, it will work. The danger is you cannot reproduce the results because you don't know which one was responsible for what. So when the average believer is plagued with a situation, on one hand, man, the man of God is praying for you. On another hand, you are praying. Then you are sowing a seed. Then you are taking communion. Then you are calling the name of Jesus. Then you are confessing the word. Every one of these arsenals of victory have their allocations. There are results that they produce. You have to know what is connected to what. Are we blessed? You don't just become an influential person. No. There are divine patterns that are responsible for influence in the kingdom. And every person, again I'm glad we have those in government and politics. If you do not understand these divine patterns, you may be well-meaning. But you will not be able to command the kind of influence that allows you to lead God's people effectively. There is a grace. As a man of God, there is a grace that helps your congregation to hear and understand what you are saying. Just because what you are teaching is true does not mean people will believe you. No. Paul calls it the grace that makes all men see. It's a grace. So your assignment as a believer is that in partnership with the word of God and in partnership with the Holy Spirit, you begin to search through scripture looking for the patterns that are connected to the various dimensions of God's glory. You see that now? So, Lord, I am trusting you to step into a level of favor and the blessing of the Lord for the sake of my family, for the sake of ministry, for the sake of what I am doing. And he takes you on a journey and he shows you this is the blueprint. And I did tell us in the morning for those of us who were around that because of God's insistence that we learn his ways, there are times that he knows it is difficult for you to start fishing these patterns on your own. So he personifies these patterns in men. There are men who are embodiments of these patterns. So that instead of searching Genesis to Revelation, you can study these men. For instance, if you want to be blessed in the kingdom, the personality referred to by God for your study is Abraham. Abraham is God's idea of what it means for a man to be blessed. Elijah is God's idea of a man who prays prevailing prayers that can take over territories. Are we together now? Esther is God's idea of how favor works. A woman who can leave Shushan as a villager, Hadassah, and then become queen over 127 provinces. Defeat her man. And like I said in the morning, she never held a knife. Are we together? Yes. When you read the book of Ruth, Ruth is God's idea on how God can restore men. When he talks about restoration, you look at a woman who lost all her children, lost her husband. She was not the first to lose this kind of thing. It happened to the widow in name. But the life of Ruth shows us how someone can bounce back no matter what goes bad. Another personality that shows us territorial influence is Job. You can study Job to know how God can lift a man and make him a captain over a territory. Job was a gatekeeper. And in chapter 29 of Job, he said, Oh, that I was in the days of my youth. He says, when his light, verse 3, 29, verse 3 of Job, he says that his candle shined upon my head and when by his light I walked through darkness. This is the spiritual pattern responsible for territorial influence. You must have illumination and direction. The candle that comes on your head is for light and illumination. The candle that shines on your feet is for direction.
Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Hallelujah. Illumination by the power of the Holy Spirit that you know what to do. It is dangerous to not know what to do. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? Three keys that control the manifestation of God's glory. Haven't understood divine patterns. I gave us one in the morning and very quickly I'll talk about the other two so that we can have some time to pray tonight is a miracle service hallelujah and i shared with us in the morning that the first key that controls the manifestation and the revelation of god's glory in the life of an individual in the life of a people is the priesthood ministry of prayer with fasting the priesthood ministry of prayer with fasting the priesthood ministry of prayer with fasting. He spake a parable, Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, that men ought always to pray. Once you are a man, it is mandatory that you pray. Hallelujah. Are we together? The priesthood ministry of prayer with fasting. In Luke chapter 9, I did state in the morning, that the primary assignment of prayer is not for receiving things. There is a dimension of prayer that has to do with supplications and petitions. For instance, the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. It says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, it says, let your request be made known. So God wants your request to be known. He that he says, ye have asked for nothing, he says, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. So God wants you to ask. He says, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest it and thou shalt have it. So I'm not against prayer as a spiritual channel for reception. But the primary assignment of prayer, according to Luke chapter 9, please give us verse 28. The primary assignment of prayer is for the transformation of the believer. And it came to pass, he says, he took Peter, John, and James to a mountain to pray. And a miracle happened in verse 29. As he prayed, not before he prayed, as he prayed, transformation. The fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white. That means prayer is able to prune the flesh in the presence of God through the ministry of prayer and fasting. There is a version of you that you must evolve to to be able to host superior dimensions of God's glory. In as much as God desires to cause his glory to rest upon us, the Bible says, Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Then it says, In a great house, there are all kinds of vessels, some of gold, of silver, of wood, and of clay. It says, Some vessels are unto honor, and some vessels are unto dishonor. Here's the condition. It says, If a man will purge himself, that man will be a vessel unto honor, meet for the master's use. Are we together? This is very important. In this kingdom, John 15, that anyone who bears fruit, let's read verse 3. There is a way that God builds people. Let's start from verse 2, really. It says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit. The moment you are not bearing fruit, he does not destroy you. He knows what you need. He says, will be taken away. But every branch that bears fruit, what does he do to it? The moment God finds you bearing fruit, he will stretch you to bear more fruits. Huh? 
and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you he will stretch you in the place of prayer and tell you look this issue of praying for 20 people and having only one person healed that is not a, an accurate representation of my potentials let's go deeper into the things of the spirit so that you can host heavier dimensions of his glory he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint an attack on your prayer life an attack on your capacity to fast is a is a, a real attack and i did tell us we we're speaking especially to the servants of god respectfully and this is true for anyone you know the more you get busy the more you have to prioritize your life it is my prayer that as you prioritize your life god will not be part of the things you downsize from your life no that the fire upon your altar will remain day and night. Jalingo, I give you a key to genuine revival and effulgence of the power of God. It will take more than conferences to bring an authentic revival. It will take men and women who master the art of holding on to the horns of the altar. The Bible talks about Anna the prophetess, a woman who for more than 60 years of her life she kept calling jesus to come down jesus did not just come to the earth there was a woman who prayed him to the earth maranatha come that was her prayer for 60 years the bible says call on me and i will answer it says i will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not i pray that we become a people of prayer i pray that the homes in jalingo becomes homes that pray that we do not just pray when there is trouble or when there is a crisis no it must become a culture we must we must transfer that thought many religions the foundational tenets that they teach their children is the power and the invincibility of prayer prayer is powerful transformation show me a weak christian show me a timid christian living a defeated christian life among many factors some of them you are about to hear but submit yourself to the ministry of genuine prayer with fasting and i show you one who begins to evolve in the spirit has thou not known has thou not heard the bible says the everlasting god the lord the maker creator of the ends of the earth that he does not faint he does not get weary there is no searching of his understanding then he says even the young men will faint the old men will be weary he says but they that wait upon the lord a miracle begins to happen to you as you wait they will mount up with wings as the eagles he says they will run and not be weary they will walk and not faint let me share with you one more revelation about prayer when jesus came into the temple please look up i'm trusting that god is speaking to us when jesus came into the temple he found men buying and selling is that true and the bible says he made weep and began to flog them he turned the table of the exchangers and with full of zeal and passion here's what he said he said my house it is written that my house shall be called the house of prayer but you have turned it into a den of robbers please look up let me share with you a revelation there are two things the house of god can become either a house of prayer or a place for thieves i'm not talking of the church the first house is not the building the first house is you it is either you are a house of prayer or you are a place where the thief comes to steal to kill or to destroy jesus said it that the moment you take away prayer from this house the thief is soon coming and he will come to steal to kill and to destroy 
So you are either a house of prayer or a den of robbers. A church that does not pray will never agree. You will have all kinds of conflict coming from people who are walking in the flesh who will create all kinds of troubles. And let me tell you this. When we get people saved, when we get people born again, part of the systemic mentorship structure they must submit to among the many foundational things they must learn is the power of prayer if they do not pray you will have many people who are saved in church full of carnality full of flesh because the transformation that prayer should achieve in them would not be there so you have all kinds of harvests that begin to rot in the house of god causing all kinds of trouble for people do not fight prayer groups some of these are young people who have small small prayer groups fathers of faith don't fight them guide their foolishness and their childishness but don't destroy them because it is on the wings of those prayers that revival is a build up yes some of them will be immature some of them will misbehave the beauty of fatherhood is to rebuke yet to cover if the devil wants to attack jalingo i can tell you one of the ways that you will attack this city is to make sure like the days of daniel let there be no prayer for just 30 days that's all satan needs to destroy a territory for 30 days do not call upon the god of heaven but i see men and women of prayer rising from this conference in the name of jesus christ I pray that you will obtain grace to destroy spiritual laxity and laziness. Because there are many of you here, the grace and the mantle for revival upon your city has been looking for you. But not this version of you. There is a version of you that prayer can produce. Many of the people who have been greatly used across the globe today, they did not even know they were called to ministry they began to pray one hour every day every day every day every day now you see consistency is a law in the realm of the spirit consistency attracts the spirit component of that action that means for instance watch this i can come and steal it doesn't have to be the devil i have my human will i can use it to steal I'm not under the influence of the spirit of theft. But if I do it tomorrow, and I do it next tomorrow, my consistency is attracting that spirit. Are you seeing that now? So you can go to pray. First day you are tired, but once you are praying consistently, you are attracting the spirit of prayer and supplication. One day you will go to that place of prayer, and you will not be by your strength again. From that day onward, you will not be able to undo it again. It almost becomes like an addiction. Are we learning? Number two, we have to hurry up. The second key that is responsible for the manifestation of the glory of God is found in 2 Chronicles chapter 7. It's called sacrifice. You want to see the glory of God? The glory of God answers to sacrifice. The glory of God answers to sacrifice. Now, this was at the time when Solomon, remember how that David wanted to build a house for God. Is that true? And God said it was a good thing that David wanted to build him a house. But he said he had shed so much blood and David gathered the materials together to allow his son Solomon. So this is Solomon now. After building the house for God, the dedication of the temple was about to start. Are we ready? Follow carefully the first five verses. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, again we see prayer there. The fire came down from heaven and consumed what? The bond offering. There was first an offering upon the altar, and then fire came and consumed the offering and the sacrifices. 
and then as a result the glory of the Lord filled the house next verse and the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord why because the glory the very Shekinah of God filled the Lord's house verse 3 and when all the children of Israel saw how that fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground this is what happens when men experience a manifestation of the glory of God they worship the Bible says and they praise the Lord saying for he is good and his mercies endure forever verse 4 then the king and all the people offered more sacrifices again that means if sacrifice brought the glory let's offer more sacrifices so that the glory will remain can I tell you this as anybody who carries superior dimensions of God's glory and grace they will tell you it came on the wings of sacrifice sacrifice represents the constraints the inconveniences that happen in the life of an individual that give allowance for the manifestation of the power and the grace of God sacrifice there are many people who want to carry superior dimensions of God's grace but they do not want to go through a life of sacrifice it takes sacrifice to study scripture it takes sacrifice the labor dimension of prayer it takes sacrifice to fast it takes sacrifice to love the house of God even more than your necessary food are we blessed Psalm 50 verse 5 says gather unto me my saints he says they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice by sacrifice by sacrifice when Solomon was about to access the wisdom of God the Bible says he offered a thousand bond offerings please look at me do you know what it means to offer a thousand bond offerings replace everybody in this auditorium as humans just imagine that we're all sheep or rams and Solomon said I love you that much sacrifice it 100 200 and God was watching who is this 300 Lord I love you that much 400 and he says angels this is not for you stay back this is now my business this man is no longer calling angels 500 600 700 900 950 he would have stopped but he said no Lord I'm showing you how much I love you 1,000 bond offerings and that night not next week the Lord came and said you have called me you called me and I am here what do you want and he asked for an understanding heart he says because you have not asked for riches or wealth you have not even asked for the life of your enemies he says I will grant you that which you have prayed for and I'll also give you the things you did not ask for riches wealth and honor such as no man many of you do not know what sacrifice can do there is a way you can press into the things of God and God will enter a personal covenant with you and say on account of what you have done for me there are people who have emptied their accounts because of the kingdom there are people who have done certain things that God vowed a vow over them and said for as long as you are alive your children and your children's children will never beg for bread again because you have done this for me believers can I tell you this I'm not just talking about finances and the rest but you see in as much as I know that here and there people have been manipulated people have been taken advantage of can I tell you you will never rise to certain spiritual dimensions until you sustain the grace and the power to lay down the power to lay down is how we pick grace the power to lay down is how we pick on common mantles I have the power to lay it down I told you there is a relationship between death and glory 
not everything comes by impartation there are wells you must dig by yourself sacrifice this is the reason why the bible says he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake do you know why because upon the altar of these vessels there is blood dripping on that altar as a testament of sacrifice you don't just tell the sick be healed and they are healed just because you saw it in the bible no sir you don't just speak to people and say may your life change and then their lives change no no let me be sincere with you in the name of honesty it takes sacrifice it is all the grace of god but the administration of that grace comes on the wings of sacrifice some of you here god is calling you and telling you at the level you are operating spiritually there are certain levels of spiritual power you cannot carry you want god to trust you with the grace over territories no sir no sir no sir it comes on the wings of sacrifice please take it high for me once upon a time in my life i locked myself and i prayed for 72 hours my eyes did not see the sun i didn't know whether it was morning or night 72 hours that you don't know whether it's morning or night my eyes did not see a wall clock listen i don't say this to brag but sometimes it's good that when you are mentoring people especially people coming fathers of faith let's be honest to tell this our dear people how god brought us here so that they don't believe it's just by some arbitrary impartation there are politicians here one of the reasons why many people we are raising do not become effective is because they ride on the advantage and the leverage that our sacrifices are provided without the knowledge of the cost when a young boy has a father who is a millionaire and a billionaire and whether or not he's ready to understand the laws of life he's given a car and houses without any sense of discipline that child will most likely be a lawless person are we together yes i can tell you various points in my life i don't know how many times i have emptied my account i'm not saying to do that i'm just telling you that some of these things come on the wings of sacrifice sacrifice this is the secret of our fathers of faith that we so celebrate it is more than just what you see my dear people let me encourage you especially for many of you that god is going to be using for the revival in this land it is more than suits and nice clothes it is more than just protocol standing all those things are just systems of convenience and order your attention must be on jesus this one thing i do he says forgetting the things that are behind i press not just i move i press stop unnecessarily pampering yourself when you have not arrived no it is on the seventh day that he rested you are resting on the second day it's not correct god only rested on the seventh day many people are already resting by day two you must constrain yourself the discipline and the sacrifice that it takes to host the glory in prayer in fasting in service in giving are we learning tonight so the second is sacrifice one more scripture we're done with this in first kings chapter 18 first kings chapter 18 let's start from verse 1 this was the story of Elijah there is something for us to learn the power of sacrifice please follow carefully and it came to pass after many days the Bible says that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying 
Go show yourself unto Ahab. For the sake of time, let's go to verse 9, I think. So that we'll just save time. Elijah went to Ahab. And Ahab was sad and, you know, called him a troublemaker in Israel. Next verse. There's something I'm looking for. And then, please continue. It says, And now, and now thou said, Go and tell thy Lord. Behold, Elijah is here. So Elijah came and, oh dear, I need to search for, for the sake of time. It's a long reading. It ends in verse 7. But let's start from verse 19. I think it's 19. Give me verse 19. Thank you. It says, Now therefore, Send and gather me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. There's about to be a demonstration, a manifestation of the glory of God. The God of the Bible is about to be exalted, but not without sacrifice. Next verse 20. It says, So I have sent all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. Please follow carefully. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Next verse. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophet are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks. Now, he wants fire to come from heaven, but he starts with an object of sacrifice. Give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under. Back to 23, please. Let's finish it up. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under verse 24 it says and call on the name of your gods and i will call on the name of the lord and the god that answered by fire let him be god hold on hold on many of you want the fire let me tell you how fire is produced in this kingdom and all the people answered and said it is well spoken next verse now watch this so it was the time for the prophets of Baal to start. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourself, and then put this and that 26. And they took the bullock, listen, which was given them, and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning till noon. Now, notice the things that begin to happen. From morning till noon, that sacrifice on the altar, and they were calling on Baal, the Bible says, they said, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And then they started leaping upon the altar. Look at how they were changing strategies. All to call down fire. They started by invoking and calling Baal. Then they started by jumping. By the time we get to 27, it came to pass at noon. Elijah mocked them and said, cry aloud for he is a god either he is talking or he is pursuing or he is on a journey or per adventure he sleeping very naughty prophet i must be awake 28 now watch this everybody read verse 28 this was the final strategy they deployed to get the attention of baal one to go and they cried aloud and caught themselves after their manner with knives and till blood gushed out of them stop what did they know about Baal? that when every other thing failed they said Baal, we know since you will not accept the bullock you will see us cut our own selves after their manner that means someone had taught them that when everything fails be the sacrifice yourself you can offer sacrifices and get a a measure of the attention of Baal but if you want to get all of him and all else fails more than giving sacrifices become it yourself this was the last card that they put on that altar 
29. And it came to pass, watch this, when midday was past, Elijah was a wise man, and they prophesied until the time of offering and of the evening. Look at when Elijah started his own. He said, use your morning. There is a timing I'm waiting for. I, I, I understand the ordinances of heaven. I want to wait until the time of the evening sacrifice. And when it was that time, he said, you have done enough. I gave you from morning till evening. That there was neither any voice nor any answer to one that regarded 30. Let's tie it up. Elijah said unto the people, come, let me show you how fire is produced. Learn this now. Are you ready to see how fire is produced? Step one, he said, repair the altar. You want fire? Step one, repair the altar that was broken down. This is fire now that is not lit by a man. Repair the altar of the Lord that is broken down. Step two, let's hurry up. Elijah now took 12 stones according to the number of the sons of Jacob, the covenant. He brought these are the ingredients now, like a chef about to prepare a meal. We see. The repair of the altar of the Lord. We see covenant now coming into the picture. 32. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And made a trench about the altar. As great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put on the wood in order. And cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said fill four barrels with water we see the ministry of the word there are you seeing it now these are the ingredients that produce fire genuine fire cannot come when the word is not there too so he says put water and he says pour that water on the bond offering pour the water on the wood 34 and he said pour the water again we need a lot of water for this fire for every one bullock you need serious water let the word keep pouring it do it a second time he says do it a third time and the water ran round hold on hold on hold on don't rush give us verse 30, 33 please don't rush it 33 and they did it a second time they did it a third time 34 it says and the water ran round about the altar and filled the trench with water these are the ingredients that produce fire and it came to pass at the time of the offering and the evening sacrifice that means in addition to your prayer life the altar in addition to your word life the water now you must wait for the time of the evening sacrifice and Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and I have done all these things at thy word. 37. Hear me, O Lord. Ah. Hear me, and these people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their hearts back again. 38. Please talk to me and the fire and the fire fell over Jalingo and the fire fell over every local government why? because the altar of the Lord was rebuilt it consumed the burnt offering it consumed the wood it consumed the stones it consumed the dust it licked up the water that was in the strength. Two more verses and we're done. It says, when the people saw it, God wants his glory seen. They will never call upon the name of the Lord until they see it. They fell on their faces. And they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Last verse. 
and the bible says elijah said take the prophets of baal let not one of them escape and they took them and elijah brought them to the brook Kishon, and they slew them there that day the name of the lord was exalted everybody shout sacrifice one more time say sacrifice number three then we begin to pray the third key according to scripture that controls the manifestation of the glory of god is called faith the obedience of faith john chapter 11 and verse 40 there is a relationship between believing and the glory of god please read with me john 11 and verse 40 one to read jesus said unto her the woman now saith i not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe thou should see there is a connection between the manifestation of the glory of god and your faith what is faith faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction on who god is and the integrity of his person the name given to the action you take as a testament that you believe god is called faith faith is also the participatory condition that you have to meet connected to the blessing that you desire faith the bible says now faith is that is the first information it gives us about faith hebrews 11 now faith is faith is not worse faith is not will be faith is living and active and present now faith is he calls it the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen he says for by it the elders obtain a good report verse 3 says through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of god media are we walking together verse 3 it says so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear by faith can i tell you this you want to see the manifestation of the glory of god on your life you are going to have to believe god and take that step you want to see god build the church for himself through your hands you are going to have to take a step of faith even if all you have is 100,000, go and buy sharp sand and pour it on the ground as a sign of faith. All you need to do to finish is make God become Alpha. Because if he's Alpha, he must also be Omega. Don't ask God to be Omega over what you have not made him Alpha over. Start with him. You want to pray for the sick? You must have the courage to stand before a sick body believing that god will raise him from the bed of affliction you know i share humorously i have prayed for many many dead people in my life many dead people in my life usually when people die people reach me first before they eventually make up their minds to bury them i have been locked in the mortuary left with dead bodies alone to pray for them that is the price to carry the glory if you ever will raise a dead body you must have the courage to stand before one i remember the first time i was taken to the anatomy lab then in zaria and there were dead bodies there and they just closed me there. i said now there are dead bodies here which one am i going to pray for now and they showed me the man I stood before the man and he was like stone had been embalmed already I laid my hands I said in the name of Jesus Christ I call you back nothing happened in the name of Jesus I call you back nothing happened in the name of Jesus I call you back nothing happened and I said open the door for me please let me get out of this place but can I tell you this every time you take a step of faith whether you see results at that moment or not you will never live the same your fears will die listen today you hear all of these wonderful testimonies can i be honest with you it did not start from one many people will lie to you and make it look as if everything started from day one it's not true once upon a time i prayed for someone on a wheelchair 
I remember I was full of faith. I took out time to share scripture. I mean a thorough exegesis of the healing ministry of Jesus. And they had faith. They honored me so much when I got to the house. That man had faith. I know he had faith. And after all that gisting, all that praying, now it was time for performance. And I prayed for this man. Absolutely nothing happened. He was not even feeling anything from waist down. And after praying, ah, I said, why now? But I left encouraged. Peter's shadow does not just start healing the sick. Uh -uh. Once upon a time, he was disappointed also. And Jesus said, don't worry. You are a student in the school of the spirit. You just continue. Let me bring you words of hope. There are times that you may seem to release your faith and not see the manifestation as yet. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. One day it will do you like a dream. You will stand before that man on the wheelchair and say, stand up. And you will join the people to be surprised when it happens. Can I tell you this? Your faith will not grow in theory. You need to be exposed to real life situations. faith you must learn to believe god if you want to see the glory of god john chapter 2 the whole text is from verse 1 to 11 but then the verse of emphasis for the sake of time is verse 11 please give us verse 11 we have to start praying please read with me believers after turning water to wine here's what he said this beginning of miracles did Jesus in the Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory. Wow. So one of the ways that we manifest the glory of God is in miracles, signs, and wonders. Last scripture, Mark chapter 1. Let's see how Jesus came as a revelation and the manifestation of the glory of God. Mark chapter 1 let's start our reading from verse 21 please pay attention jalingo pay attention body of christ and they went into capernaum he says and straightway on the sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one with authority and not as the scribes and there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit aha uh -huh. A statement mocking the integrity and the power and the glory of God and cried out 24 saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou Jesus of Nazareth art thou come to destroy us I know thee who thou art the Holy One of God verse 5 Jesus rebuked him saying hold your peace come out of him and when the unclean spirit had torn him he cried out with a loud voice and he came out of him the Bible says they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority commanded he even unclean spirits and they do obey him please go to verse 32 go to verse 32 the Bible says at evening just like it is in this crusade now in Jalingo when the Sun did set they brought to him every time people discern that you are a carrier of God's glory they will come to you they will come to you they brought to him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils and all the city was gathered at the door the plan was not to have a crusade Jesus was just teaching but because of the manifestation of the glory the whole city said come we have discerned that the glory of God is within reach the Bible says and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him 35 and then in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out to a solitary place and 
prayed. You can see these patterns repeated. And Simon and they that were with him followed him. Every pastor here and everybody who loves God may verse 37 be the verse for you. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. They seek for you. Why? Because of the glory of God. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verse 2 says, For darkness shall cover the earth. Is a Hebrew word to who wabohu, confusion and chaos, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen in you. Jalingo, here's a prophecy for you, verse 3. It says, Gentiles shall come to your light, and even their kings to the brightness of your rising. Are you ready to celebrate the God of wonders? Please rise up on your feet. One prayer point, and then I'll begin to pray for people. Father, give me a visitation within the few minutes that we have. Let there be a manifestation of your glory upon this ground. Let there be a manifestation of your glory even within this city. Please lift your voice inside and outside. Begin to pray. Go ahead and pray. You're not a man, no. You're not a man, no. You're the God who opens doors no man can shut. You're not a man, no. You're not a man, no. You're the God of everything, no one like you. No one like you, Jesus, no one like you. No one like you, is it no one like you? No one like you, Father, no one like you, Master. You're the God of everything, no one like you. Go ahead and pray. Lord, change my life. Change my life. Someone is praying. pray open up your heart you who are following from whatever TV station following online from your homes release your faith the power of God is about to touch you you are here working miracles I worship you, I worship you, you are here, turning lives around, I worship you, I worship you, we call you Waymaker, Miracle Walk, Promise King. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We call you Waymaker, Miracle Walker, Promise Keeper. Light in the darkness, that is who you are. I assure you that within the few minutes we have, your life will never be the same. Many of you are about to encounter grace at another level and at another dimension. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Now, please listen. 
we're just going to do three or four things very quickly number one just help those under the anointing i'm going to be praying for the sick and we'll be trusting the lord to deliver the oppressed every kind of captivity whatsoever hallelujah and then number two we are going to be praying prophetically declaring over jalingo that the two lift gates over the city must be open number three we are going to trust god for a moment of impartation and impartation is a transference of grace and then number four we are going to declare over everyone here celebrating salvation and we're done for tonight hallelujah praise the name of the lord now just two quick instructions please number one whether you are an usher or not inside and outside please help those under the anointing the ushers are limited and there's only so much they can do but i want to plead with you please when someone is under the anointing close to you be your brother's keeper you just help them it will not interrupt your own prayer the lord wants to have a convocation of his presence in this place in the name of jesus christ praise the name of the lord i believe in miracles i truly believe in the performance of the word i believe that the word of god must find expression i believe that in the midst of god's people haven't taught the word with power there must be a demonstration of the reality of the power and the grace of god and don't just watch and celebrate what god is doing that your heart is also opened for this to become your experience in the name of jesus christ can you pray in one minute lord anything that must leave my life now this is the moment for it to go go ahead and pray Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I want to pray for you. Please pay attention. Pay attention. There are angelic activities in this place now. The Bible says, But upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and then the sons of jacob shall possess their possessions i want to pray right now and please i want you to help them just bring those under the anointing if you can and i'll minister to them so that they can go but i want to declare there are forces that have sat over the destinies of men that will not let men to find visibility some of you age-long captivities i want to pray for you now the lord is that spirit there are many spirits but this one is that spirit and the bible says where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty father i want to pray at the count of three i'm going to ask you to shout the name jesus that name that has been exalted above every other name and as you shout that name every force that is not ordained of god sitting over the destinies of men that wall must come down right now are you ready one two three shout jesus now i decree and declare that every power that is not of god give way now i command every force that does not name the name of christ let god's people go now let God's people go now. Bring them out. I command every power, every operation of witchcraft, every demonic orchestration, be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Bring them out. Listen. Can I tell you this? The Lord is delivering people here. 
there are many of you you have been victims of delay everything moves forward except your life i decree and declare let fire right now fall from heaven upon every in the name of jesus christ everyone bow everyone bow of the devil i command be delivered now be set free in the name of jesus bring them out just help them just get something so you can cover some of them in the name of jesus christ and pray blotting every handwriting he says and every ordinance that spoke against us that he nailed it to his cross therefore i declare every other spirit having access to your life and destiny outside of the outside of the christ in the name of jesus the son of the living god exalted over chalingo as both lord and christ be delivered now be delivered now delivered now my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by your deliverer is coming your deliverer is standing by is coming my deliverer is standing by now hear me i'm praying for families here any family here that doors have been shut i come by the apostolic and the prophetic in agreement with the body of christ the anglican communion and the church over chalingo in the name of jesus i speak to close doors Efata, be open, be open, be open, be open, be open, be open. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Bible says, with the Holy Ghost and with power, he went about doing good. And healing all they that were oppressed of the devil it says for God was with him now for all of you in front alongside those who are scattered around every spirit that will not let you go whatever legal access it cast over you we come by the blood of the eternal covenant that speaks better things than the blood of Abel be set free now 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 be set free by the power of Jesus. All hail the power of Jesus' name. It says, bring forth the royal diadem. We declare liberty right now. Let there be deliverances for everyone here. Hear me everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you hey everything that was lost shall be returned unto you Everything that was stolen Hallelujah Hallelujah I'm going to pray for the sick shortly But who is Abraham? I'm hearing a name Abraham Just to talk to one or two people Abraham Abraham I'm hearing the name Please if, if God locates you Just hurry up so that we don't waste time we have to work with time. Who is Abraham? Where are you from, my friend? Huh? 
Gate. From Kogi State, I based Ko in Jaws. Kogi State. Yes, I based in Jaws. The Abraham I'm seeing is wearing a bag. Like a black bag. This is what I'm seeing. Is there someone like that? Who is that? Verify. Please, hold on. Please, when I call, just don't let people come at random. Just verify. We're not acting here. What's your name? Jacob Abraham. Jacob Abraham. Yes. From where? Taraba. Jalingo. I want to pray for you. Your life is about to change, my brother. What's wrong with this man? Huh? He's okay, blind. that's all right. When I'm ready to pray for the sick, don't just just wait. When I'm ready to pray for them, don't just drag them out. You you punish the man here. Now watch this, my friend. You believe in the power of God. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands towards you, and I declare right now, may that power come upon you and change your life. Take that fire now. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will never be the same by the power of the Holy Spirit. Never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. Who is Asabe? I'm hearing a name Asabe. Is there someone with such a name? I'm hearing a name Asabe. The Lord wants me to speak to you. Asabe, that, that should be a woman's name. Is there someone like that? Asabe. Asabe, like blue, you are dressed in blue or something. Is there somebody like that? Who is that? Come. You believe in Jesus? Listen, please hear me. This is not just some, some madness and jamboree. No. We're people of order and dignity and decency. Are we together? This is the power of God blessing and lifting and helping people. In the name of Jesus, my dear, where are you coming from? Taraba. Taraba here. I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, I curse that devil. I'm seeing something tied around you. Out now! In the name of Jesus Christ. And then comes to it. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. Yesterday, I prayed for two women... And today I'm seeing a woman seven years. You have not given birth. Who is that? Seven years. Come. Your time has come. Seven years. Is there someone like that? Is she wearing like, is it baby pink? Baby pink. No, there is still another one. Baby pink with a hair tie that is like baby pink. Is there someone like that? Just bring them here. I want to pray for you. Nadauka ka sunanka ubangi chika isayabo nakir mama sunanka ubangi chi ni nadauka ka sunanka ubangi chika isayabo. Nagir mama sunanka ubangi ji. Look at me, madam. How long have you been married? Seven years. Huh? Seven years. I want to pray for you. You believe in Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you, it never tires me to see the wonder-working power of Jesus, bringing liberty. Look at this, our precious sisters now, just like that. And that's the end of it. That's what happens when his glory comes. The power of God is going to come on one of you. One of you who is standing now among these women. I just saw light. I will pray for everyone. But I just saw the power of God. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare. Let it be. Madam, over now. According to the time of life. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God. That which hinders you from giving birth. We stand and we open the gates of your womb. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message,
We believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.